New soundboard issues. So we got that new soundboard. That is, that's really loud. How's that sound? Better? Worse? About the same? That's what my optometrist always says. Better? Worse? About the same? Okay. I am uh, under the impression that Jason Wagner says we need more sound, and he's a little bit more sound, so it might be the monitors I hear. I don't know. But new soundboard issues. Got to love it, right? Anyways, we went to an analog to a digital board, and so they're working. Uh, it's the worst time ever to get a new soundboard at a missions conference. But maybe by the end of this, we'll have all that kinks ironed out. So bear with us. And uh, if you hear a squelch from time to time or whatever it is, understand that all the settings have to be completely redone. And uh, so they're just working that out and ironing it out. And they've done a lot of work in a um, kind of controlled environment, but then you start throwing in all the, the different things that go on with the service and they find out that they didn't think quite of everything. Everybody's been there before though, right? Hey, I got one announcement to give you this morning just uh, to help you out before we get into missions conference um, things. Brother Don Hopkins caught me this morning and said he went early voted yesterday, 15 minute wait time at the city, uh, the city, uh, city hall. The first year they've done Saturday and Sunday opening at noon, Don said. And so I'd encourage you, after church, maybe swing by there if you haven't voted yet and look and see if there's a bunch of cars parked out there. If there's not, then you might be able to get away with voting early, quickly. Every time I've been down there, had 30 minutes or something like that, it was line to the street. <clears throat> and so I decided I'll wait until all these people get through the line and maybe I can do it next week. But uh, just wanted to give you that because, well, the Bible tells us to make righteous judgments. And uh, there are plenty of, well... I'm not going to preach next week's message, but there are plenty of c commands uh, to script in Scripture that apply to the king and to those who rule, and the last I checked, it's we the people, isn't it? And so, think about this for a moment. Now, I'm just going to sow a seed for a moment. It is typical for you and I to believe that those who are in authority is the president, Congress, everybody agrees with that, right? But who puts them there? So who's the real authority? You with me for a moment? So who's going to be responsible ultimately? The decisions we make on who we put, we will answer to God for that. Uh, so very, just wanted to give you that. I know that early voting is going to be uh, shut down soon, so I don't want you to, to think, man, I should have voted early. But uh, vote, it's important. It's super important. It's, uh, it's something that we do as a duty, not only to our country, but to God himself. And so I encourage you to do that. Well, we have a bunch of missionaries here this morning. Of course, I, uh, listen, I, I never like going <clears throat> to a church and having to stand up and introduce myself and all that kind of stuff, so I don't do that here, aren't you? Isn't that great, Brother Gary? <clears throat> and so, listen, I always figured out this. You say, well, then nobody's going to know who the missionaries are. Well, if, if you've got somebody new in your church and you haven't gone and introduced yourself and figured out who they are, then shame on you, right? Y'all with me? And so I'm, I'm counting on you to figure out who the missionaries are. How's that? Y'all with me? Don't, don't disappoint me. What we do is Katie Dilfer. She's going to South Africa. And then uh, we have the Coker family here this morning. And uh, they are going to China. And then we have the Stensuses. But they're not here yet. They come in on Monday, if I uh, am correct. And, the Joel and his family didn't get to make it with him this, uh, this trip. But nevertheless, we won't hold that against him since he didn't bring the better part of his family. I know me. If you, if you get just me and you don't get Crystal and the girls, then you have got gypped badly. And so, uh, and then of course, uh, this morning we're going to have Brother Gary Britton preaching and teaching for us, and this afternoon as well. Brother Gary Britton is going to come in just a moment, but Brother Gary and Miss Brenda, I have known them. I have known them since I was uh, about half as tall, and uh, about 10 or 11 years old. Uh, of course, my pastor growing up, Brother Olton Phillips, was the model pastor, quite frankly, and he'll tell you that. Uh, probably the greatest man of God I ever met in my entire life. Anyways, Mrs. here now everybody awake uh, I lost my train of thought guess I didn't need to drink that coffee
Oh, oh man, we had some of the greatest preachers come to the school. Wonderful thing. So I, I've talked a lot about Brother Gary. I appreciate him. He was a Marine, and he says, I'm not allowed to say was, I'm sure. <laughs> he, uh, did Brother Phillips lead you to the Lord? You led him to the Lord? I knew that one, it was one way or the other. And uh, he got saved and was a missionary in Chile for 10 years, uh, in country 10 years. And then, of course, deputation for two. I still sound really hollow. And, uh, and then he's been pastoring there in Arcola, Texas, for 28 years outside of Houston, if you know where Arcola is, between Houston and Galveston. And uh, he's going to come, and he can talk more, about, more intelligently about himself than I can. And apparently the microphone's not going to let me speak anyway. Uh, so I'm going to let Brother Gary come. Why don't you come, Brother, and give us something from the Word of God. Good morning. Am I loud? I'm allowed. <laughs> Amen. Well, I'm, I'm glad to be here and appreciate Brother Joshua inviting me. Boy, can't, and per, I tell you, first of all, let me say, I drove by here last night. And I said, that is one beautiful church. I couldn't believe the location. We live in, we live in Arcola, which some of y'all might know where Sugar Land is, or Houston, and there's Missouri City where Arcola's on down the road a little ways, and it is flat and ugly. But that's where God put me. So it's pretty in that sense. I mean, I've been there 28 years pastoring, and there at uh, Calvary Baptist Church. I, you know, a lot of people ask me at my age, I'm two and a half, you know, and they say, when are you going to retire? I said, I'm, there's no retiring. How do you retire? And uh, as long as the Lord blesses me and my wife here with health, we plan on continuing, uh, continuing pastoring. I love to preach the Word of God. I love the, the, you know, just serving the Lord. I, I will say this before I get into my lesson this morning, just a, a word uh, he mentioned about my brother-in-law, Olton. Uh, I did serve in the, in the Marine Corps for four years and a couple of tours of duty in Vietnam and Came back out of out of out of the uh, war and uh, was a professing atheist for a number of years. And uh, still, folks, I, these are the these are the, you know just a just a drunk and uh, just pot. I mean, just that that was my life for a number of years after I got out of the service and uh, didn't want to have it. I had a little brother-in-law, a little Polak brother-in-law named Ronnie Zabrowski, uh, who was uh, my 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 wife's sister's husband, who believed in the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he shared the gospel with me. And uh, I didn't listen to him the, at the first, but for two years, every time he'd get a, a chance, I, you know, he, he would witness to me and tell me about Christ. And, and you know, I believe in old-fashioned Holy Ghost conviction. God convicted me and showed me I was lost and on my way to hell without God. On January 7th, 1973, in his living room, I walked into his living room, and I told him his name was Ronnie. I said, I said, Ronnie, you said God would save somebody like me. He said, he will. And he gave me that uh, verse in, in Revelation, you know, 320, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I'll come into him and sit with him and he with me. And uh, he said, just ask God. To, he's knocking on your heart's door. Just ask him to come in and save you. And I did. And. I believe this with all my heart, salvation not only, you know, it transforms a life, completely changes a life. And uh, the Lord saved me and, and uh, put me in a good church. Follow the Lord, of course, and believe it's baptism and had a little preacher school there we went to and, and uh, north side of Houston. God saved my wife right after I got saved. Then called us to preach. Called me in 1978. Called me to go to Chile, South America. There we went and uh, spent ten years there. I thank God for it. It's good to be saved, folks. It's good to be in your church today. I count it a privilege, always, to be able to uh, to uh, speak the word of God. And I, I tell you what I'll do this morning, and uh, just uh, just to lay some groundwork. We'll be preaching on the Sunday, the Sunday uh, morning, and the Sunday uh, evening as well. Uh, a great missionary, great mission verse. If you have your Bibles, you can look there in Mark. Most of you probably can quote this verse. It didn't save any length of time. But uh, just some fundamental truths we see here in this, in this wonderful verse. Again, I want to say I appreciate the invite. 
and uh, good to be here and looking forward to this, this day. The Bible says here in the book of Mark, chapter 16, a very well-known verse, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This verse is very easy to understand, isn't it? It's very easy. It's very direct. And, uh, and I would even go as far as to say it's very demanding. It is, a command, it is not a suggestion. Our Lord said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Certainly it's not the only verse that teaches us about the Great Commission, about preaching the gospel around the world. We think about Acts 1.8 when he said, But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and the other most parts of the world. In Luke, he, the Bible tells us in chapter 24, that our Lord said, he said about re- pre- preach repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations. In Psalms 96.3, the Bible says this, is declare His glory among the heathen, His wonders among all people. And there's many, many other verses that we read and we find in the Word of God that's very clear on this subject matter. God didn't leave any room for us to, to wonder about what we're to be doing. And we see in this one verse, in our text verse, all the, the, the information, and certainly we... We, we love all 66 books of the Word of God. But in this one verse, we have all the information we know that gives us all the authority that we need to have to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ. The only hope for mankind is the gospel. The only hope for all sinners here in the gospel, the death, the burial, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and the salvation that comes freely by receiving Him as Lord and Savior. And so I thank God for the clarity that we find in this one verse. And I want us to just kind of take a few moments this uh, morning and, and look at these things and, uh, that we see in these, in these verses. Uh, again, let me just say this. The very first thing we will consider is the words when he said, it says, and he said unto them. I know that's simple, but uh, what I find in this is I find and consider the authority of this verse. Who said it? He said it. That's all the authority we need. Amen. That's all the authority. I, I, we don't need the approval of anybody else. Whether it be a denomination or whether it be a, 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 you know, whatever it might be, an organization. We have all the authority given to us by God if you're saved, if you're redeemed, to carry the gospel to a, fall, to a lost and dying world. God has given us the power. We find in the Word of God His power, His authority, His authority over the unclean spirits, His authority over the, you know, over the, uh, the, the wind and the seas, and His authority over sickness, His authority over death. It's been said that before, and I believe it's true. And by the way, when I preach, I, I don't apologize for it, but I, I, I want to preach something that's practical, something that folks can apply to their lives. And someone said this about God's authority, and it is true. After pastoring now and serving the Lord, preaching for 43 years, I have found it to be so true. And I've heard it way before, when I first got saved, before I ever started preaching. The only one that does not obey God's authority is human beings. The animal kingdom, they obey God. They do exactly what they're... A dog is supposed to bark, they bark. The only one that will not obey God is those who have been, many times, those who have been redeemed. And it's so sad, the human race, as far as that goes. But uh, God has given us the authority, the authority to obey Him, the authority to carry the gospel to the four corners of the world. Someone asked D.L. Moody one time, he was witnessing to a lost man, and, they, and the lost man said, uh, won't you just leave me alone? I mean, why, why, why do you bother me? Why, why, why don't you mind your own business? And D.L. Moody looked at him and said, you are my business. You are my business. And certainly we can say that of the lost world. They are our business. God's called us not only to preach in Pelotus or San Antonio or Houston. God's called us as God's children, of us who have tasted of the grace of God, to carry the gospel to the four corners of the world. And again, that's not a suggestion. No pastor, no 
denomination, no organization has any right to somehow to another to nullify that great commission. God's called us to do that. He's given us the authority to do that. And so someone that said, well, why should we go to the world? We've got America to reach. I like what God said. said he said that we're to be a, a witness in both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the other most parts of the world. That word both means at the same time. At the same time. Some say, why should we go? Why should we pray? Why should we give? Why should we care about someone that we've never even seen? Someone we can't even speak their language. Why should we care? Because He cares. Because when He died on Calvary's cross, He died for the sins of all mankind. The Bible said He tasted death, not just for you and I, not just for America, but He tasted death for every man. And so we have God's authority to, to go and to do what we're doing and to have a mission conference. And I, I, I thank God for Brother, Brother Joshua having a mission conference. He meant to, to reach, to have missionaries come in and present their burden that we might uh, be involved. You say, well, how do you get involved? Well, Gary, I, I'm too old to go. or I, God's never called me. We, we, we either go if God calls us, or we can pray and we can give, but we can get involved in this great commission because God has told us to do so. He said the word, and I want you to notice, I noticed it on the, on the, on the, on the uh, up front here, the word go. And uh, let me say, he, that, he, uh, that he's told us uh, what to do, to go. That's a big word, isn't it? It's a very big word. And then, you know, I, I look in the Word of God, and Paul said, I will go unto the Gentile. And I read in Luke, and he said, go after, uh, you know, go to the lost sheep and uh, find that one that's lost. Philip, and, and we look through the Word of God, and Paul and Silas, and all through the Word of God, we find that men just went. They went as God called them, and they, they went to where God called them. But God has called us to go, and I call that word a word of action. Not just, not just, uh, you know, just uh, sit and enjoy the Lord. And I do enjoy church, by the way. I enjoy Sunday school. I enjoy sitting in my local church. I enjoy pastoring. I enjoyed it even before God ever called me to preach. But, folks, there's something even more that God wants us to do, and that is to get involved in reaching a world for Christ. There's nothing like being in the will of God. There's nothing that can thrill your heart as much as know that your monies and your prayers and, and, uh, is, is uh, reaching the lost for Christ. God told us to go, and it's a call to action, and so we need to understand that, that uh, that's what God would have us to do. He told them where to go, or who to go, not where, but who to go. Who's to go? It says, go ye. Go ye. That's you and I. According to the Scriptures, the Bible said in Matthew chapter number 5, we are the, the light of the world and we are the salt of the earth. You and I, the redeemed of the Lord. The Bible tells us, and Paul said in Romans 1.14, I am a debtor, both of the, the Greeks and the barbarians. Amen. We are. We have a debt to pay. He tells us in Luke, or excuse me, in 2 Corinthians, he tells us, Telling us who's, who's the ye, he said, those who have received the ministry of reconciliation. I love I loved 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. But that's not the end of that, that text. He goes on to tell us, those that have been made new creatures in Christ, that he has given to you and I the ministry of reconciliation. Not the world. Amen, not the world, but to you and I, those that have been redeemed. God has given us the ministry to reach the world for Christ. You know what I've learned a long time ago, and I learned it in Chile. You're not going to reach everybody. Well, I wish we could. Even, here, even right here in, in, in your hometown, in your, in your area where you live, we're not going to reach everybody. But God has called us to be a witness to the world, to everyone. What a man does with the gospel. You know, that we, we got Bible said very clearly that, that only God can give the increase. I can't give the increase. You can't give the increase. This church can't give the increase. But God gives the increase. And He does it by you and I when we go and when He uses you and I as human instrumentality to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with a lost, with a lost world. 
And I don't know anything could be any more, any more exciting, any more of a, of a uh, bring you joy uh, than that. Somebody told me just this week, I think Brother George, you know Brother George, he told me just this week, and Brother George was 80-something years old. He was on, going on visitation on Saturday. I had a shirt and tie on, lived next door to my sister, and uh, he was going out on visitation there at Northside Baptist Church. But I was talking to him earlier, and he said, Brother Gary, he said 95% of Baptists have never won one person to the Lord. 95%. And I said, well, Brother George, you know, probably the vast majority, it may not be 95%, but, it, but somewhere up there have never even witnessed anybody, have never told anybody about the Lord. And that's, that's to our shame, folks. That's to our shame. And, and yet God's commissioned you and I not just to be a witness here in our Jerusalem, but to the world. I don't know anything more thrilling and, and, and to watch God work. And When I arrived in Chile as a missionary, I was uh, 31 and uh, went to language school there in Santiago, Chile to speak Spanish. But my Spanish never was that great. And I'm not that smart, but I did best I could. And I did best I could. Probably, probably my witness was something like this. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. I didn't know a whole lot, okay? But I tried my best. But you know what? The power of the gospel. The power of the gospel. I was just an, an instrument, just an old sinner saved by God's grace. But the power of the gospel by witnessing the, the, the Word of God, reading the Word of God, and, and trying to, my very best in my broken Spanish, trying to tell folks how to be saved, I've watched God touch souls and save lives. Oh, what a thrill. What a thrill. Just to, I remember one time standing on a, on a street corner and, and uh, before we actually had a location, I was trying to pray and say, God, where do you want me to start a church? Where do you want me in this town that He sent me called yo I said, where exactly? And I and as I was going down this street, I ran across somebody and I handed them a track and began to try to talk to them a little bit. Next thing you know, there was all kind of people standing around. And by the way, a lot of them because of my kids. My kids were all blonde hair and they wanted to come up and pet their hair. They wanted to touch their hair. That's okay with me. They were over there touching my kids' hair, you know, and I was over there trying to... And I, I looked around. And I had a crowd around me. And so, and best I could, I shared the gospel with them. Maybe the and hand them a track, and invite them to, uh, you know, tell them we're going to start a meeting, and we want you to come. And, and, and God moved, and God saved some of those folks, and planted a church there. That, by the way, in, in the early 1980s, and it's still going today. And folks have been saved. And you say, brother, you did a good... No, God did it. I, I, God did it. And I, I can take no credit for it. Listen, everything that's ever been good in my life is because of Him. And if I ever, anything, any success that I've ever had in my life, it's because of Him. Without Him, I tell people, without Him, I'd be sleeping underneath a bridge somewhere, probably with a cardboard sign. God's done it all. He doesn't, he doesn't need our, He just needs our, you know, our availability that we'd surrender to Him. And we would do what God tells us to do. And when we do, God will do great and mighty things. It's thrilling to me to see the Lord raise up a church and, and, uh, and just do those, what he does best, and that is save souls. And so, I'm talking about us. Again, I don't want to make it practical. Ye, you. Go ye, go ye. The ye is you. The ye is me in this verse. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. God never called anybody but those that have been redeemed because we have a message. The world has no message. Religion has no message. Only the redeemed of the Lord has a message to share with a lost and dying world. Amen. Only, the, only those that, are, that know Him as their Savior. And then He said, He also told them how, how far to go. He said, go ye into where? All the world. And don't let me go too long with Josh. Into all the world. Big old world, isn't it? I was reading a book by Lehman Strauss. Have you ever read anybody ever read off of Lehman Strauss? No. An old, uh, I don't know, I guess he's Southern Baptist. I don't know, no an author. But anyway, he's, he's got some good books on the market. And I think he may even be dead by now. I'm not sure. But I was reading a book of his, and he was talking about the population. And he was, talk, he was talking about, he said, signs of the times. 
He said, the signs of the times. He said, they're even talking about putting a man on the moon. I said, Lehman Strauss, they've done it. But he was talking about it. But he said something, in it, and I don't know how accurate this was or not, but he said back then, and I think he was talking about 65, he said there was 300 billion people in the world. Well, if that's the case, it's more than doubled since 1965. Because we're pushing somewhere around 7 billion now in the world. That's a lot of folk. Amen. What does that tell me? God tells us to, to carry the gospel to the whole world. And I, I you know, there's, there's doors that close, but God opens them in other, in, other, in other ways. Somebody told me, a preacher, a preacher of preachers in heaven now told me, he said, there's no shut doors. You may can't get in there as a missionary, but there's some folks who are going to get in there maybe as a school teacher or a whatever. Uh, but uh, God can open the doors, and God has opened the doors and opportunity in many of these missionaries I've met already in the countries they're going to. And thank God for it. And thank God for a church out here in the middle of... Listen, I'll be honest with you, and I hope you don't get mad at me, but I never even knew Helotus ever existed. I never heard of this. I never heard of Helotus. I said, where am I going? Helotus? I thought I was going to San Antonio. But you know what? God knows about Helotus. God knows about this church. Amen. God knows about you people right here at, at Helotus Baptist Church. And God has ordained it, if you will, that, you, that this church be a part of the Great Commission of reaching the world for Christ. There's, listen, God doesn't despise. I don't know how many you run. My church is not all that big, as I promise you. But God does not despise the day of small things. God, matter of fact, I found out when I was a missionary, I don't know about these other missionaries, I found out it's usually the smaller churches that will help the most. Our, our little old church, we, we, we don't run but about 60, 70, I guess, something like that. In our little church, we have 43 missionaries. We support missionaries. Wanting to do more. God is blessed, amen. And, and uh, I, had, I had a man in my church that, and I'm not talking about rich people. I don't have any rich people in my church. But I had a man in my church, and I'm just saying this to brag on the Lord, but he's dead now. He died last year. But my best man in my church, man, he's 75, I think he was, when he died. I mean, loved his pastor, loved his church, always giving, always going, always working. He gave $300 a week to Faith Promise. Never missed. And I thought, well, we lost a big giver. What's going to happen now? You know what? Somebody evidently stepped up to the plate because everything keeps going just like it always has. Thank God. Listen, thank God. God's told us to give that we might go to the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible, my Bible tells me my, our Lord's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come into repentance. That means those there in Africa, those islands or wherever it might be, amen, China, God's not willing that any should perish. And here's what I found out, folks, on the practical side. When I was a missionary in Chile, those folks there love their children and love their families as much as we do. Amen? And they, they want to see their children and their grandchildren in heaven as much as we want to see ours. But they're not going to get there, folks. They're not going to get there without the gospel. They're not going to get there without local churches like this one right here in Helotus. My church is named Calvary, Calvary Baptist Church. They're not going to get there without a people that has a world vision and say, it's our responsibility. God has given it to us. God has commanded of us to carry the gospel into the four corners of the world. What a privilege it is to do that. And uh, I'm thankful to be a part of that. We find that we find through the scriptures the great Apostle Paul, church planning, going from town to town, planting churches. And, and I, I'm thankful that the work continues on today through these missionaries and through local churches like this that finance them, that give to their, their, uh, their mission to carry the gospel out. You know, I've had the privilege in my life of knowing some great missionaries. I knew a fellow by the name of Dr. Gene Burroughs, and he was a medical doctor, not just a doctor in theology, but he was a medical doctor. He's in heaven now, him and his wife both. He graduated, his daddy, his daddy started a, started a his daddy was a medical missionary in Assam, India. And uh, 
His daddy used to start a hospital and would do surgery free. And uh, he was said he was eight or nine years old. He said when God called him to be a medical missionary like his daddy. He comes back to Houston, goes to Baylor Medical College, gets his degree. Dr. DeBakey, a famous heart doctor in Houston area, said, don't go, to, don't go back to India, you'll waste your life. He said, I'm going where God called me. And he goes back. Well, he's in heaven now. He's, he was an old man when he died. So he goes back to India. And you know what, he, you know where, you know what kind of work he did? His wife was a registered nurse. You know what they did? They did listen, they never owned a car. They never had anything that many Americans fight over and dream about having. They never had anything. They worked in a leper sim. They worked reaching lepers for Christ. He gave his life doing that. I mean, just to reach the world because they're part of the world. And, and thank God for men like that. I've known, I know a fellow by the name of Ernie right now. He's over in South Korea, but he's made several trips into North Korea carrying Bibles. If he ever gets caught, you realize what happened to him. He'd never leave there. He said, they got to hear. we they got to hear the gospel. And he takes balloons and puts tracks when the wind is in the right direction and go over there. They're trying to reach the North Koreans for Christ. He said, they don't deserve it. Oh, we didn't either, folk. I certainly didn't. Neither did you. We're all just sinners, folk. For all have sinned, amen, come short of the glory of God. None of us are worthy of the grace of God. Never were we, we could never be in a million years. But God's amazing grace reached down and touched your life and touched mine, transformed us, and given us a message that will transform a life in North Korea or in China or in South Africa or, or the islands or wherever it might be. Folks have had the privilege of knowing some folk. And uh, I'm talking about John Schrader. We mentioned to him he's in Zambia, Africa, doing a tremendous work. He, he, at times, at times I, he, he'll, he'll write a letter and he'll say, well, I, we're going to take a canoe trip down some crocodile-infested water and, and they'll go down to some village where nobody else will go just to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank God. Listen, there are some people, God's people today, that still believe and go into all the world they're going to the black faces and the brown faces and the yellow faces, going and preaching the gospel that they might get born again. Folks, we're, it's, 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 time is getting late. I like what old Brother Joe West out of San Antonio. I don't know if y'all knew him or not. But old Joe West, he's in heaven now, but he used to say, it's not time for us to serve the Lord. It's past time. It's past time. It's time for us to get busy and reach the world and do what God's told us to do. One plant, the Bible says, one watereth, but it God give the increase if we'll just get the Word of God, the seed of God's Word to the lost world. And let me say this also. He told them what to do. Let me look at this, make sure I don't. He told them what to do. Go into all the world and preach. Well, I'll tell you what I'm finding out now more than ever before in America, that's becoming unpopular. That's becoming unpopular. The Bible said, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but to, uh, unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Paul said, so as much as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Scripture said, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. What else do we do? We preach. Herald forth the message of God. Not all of us are the same. I'm not saying that. Nor do we all have to have the same delivery. I'm not saying that either. But God help us to open our voice, open our mouths, and declare the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the only hope for lost mankind. Amen. It's the only hope. I believe in teaching. I, I believe anything good we do for the Lord. Amen and amen. Let's do it. Amen. And boy, thank God for a church that still believes in preaching. And the people that will still go across the, the, the shores, across the world, and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, it's, a, it's a power of God unto salvation. I mean, we preach the gospel, souls get saved. And let me, let me say this to you, to you also. He didn't tell them just to preach. He told them what to preach, and that's the gospel. Don't you love the gospel this morning? You wouldn't be here if you wouldn't be, without the, uh, wouldn't be for the gospel. Paul said, for I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. 
It is the power of God unto salvation. They're one to believe it to the Jew first and also to the Greek. I'm not ashamed of it. The gospel message is the only hope for mankind, not politics. I believe what Brother Josh said. I believe we are to vote. That's our patriotic, you know, we are to do that. Amen? We, we, need, we need to vote. And I, and I, I always say this. We don't, we don't vote. We don't vote. And I would never get into politics, but, but I tell folks, vote in agreement with the Bible. If you do that, you'll be okay in agreement with the Bible. If, if, if candidates don't agree with the Bible, don't vote for them. Amen? I don't, that's not being, you know, I'm not saying vote for any certain, I'm saying vote the Bible. Amen? Vote the Bible. But politics in itself is not going to do anything. Good politicians are bad politicians. Amen? That's not, they're, not, they're not going to change the world. They may, they may, they may hold back some, some things you, you know that we don't want, and thank God for that. But folks, the only thing that'll change a human heart is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The only thing that can help a dying sinner is to be saved, to be born to the Spirit of God. That's what God told us to do: preach the gospel. I don't preach politics in my church. I, I, I don't preach uh, just being a better person. I don't know about. You folk, but I, what I'm noticing a lot going on in a lot of churches today is that's all they talk about. I believe in holiness. God's called us to be holy people, didn't He? God's, God's told us and, and, and instructed us in the Bible that we are to be a separated people from this world. We're to be, matter of fact, He said we're a peculiar people. We don't live like the world. We don't act like the world. We don't, we don't run with the world. We don't think like the world. God has called us to, to be a different people. But I find today sometimes that's all people put emphasis on, on being a better neighbor, being a better citizen. That, that, that won't get you to heaven. they got to have the gospel. Listen, the gospel shows a man that he's lost without God and that he's in desperate need of a Savior like He did you and me. It brings conviction when it's preached and, and it presses us down and shows us our, our undoneness and our unworthiness. and our, our, My brother-in-law used to say that led me to the Lord. He said, man is like this. Man is born with his face towards hell and his back towards God. Well, that's the truth. But the gospel can turn that around. Amen. The gospel of Jesus Christ. When received, it turns that around. Listen then our face is towards heaven, amen, and our back is towards the world as we march on for the Lord Jesus Christ. Religion can't help anybody. Only the true gospel of Jesus Christ can help people. It's not about reformation. It's about transformation. Thank God for those who do charitable work. I thank God for those who who work in orphanages and help people. I, I believe in helping people. But if you help people to have food and water and all those things, and you don't give them the gospel, you haven't helped them much. My brother, I'll say it again, and I, I know God's don't mind me saying this. I get the, this is the way I, do, I say it. Thing. Someone, I told somebody before, they said, well, you, you know, you can... Take an old drunk and you can get him sober, but if he doesn't get saved, all he's going to do is go to hell a drunk or, or a sober drunk. That's all he's going to do. Listen, the gospel doesn't want to only make a man sober. It'll make him a child of, child of the king. It'll change his life. Amen. It'll change his life for, for glory. Well, let me just say this. God has called us to do that. Amen. Hear the gospel to the four corners. Well, that's what the mission conference is all about. Brother Josh, how long have you been here now? Three years? I don't know how many mission conferences you had, but thank God for you, brother. Because there's a whole lot of young preachers today that are getting away from an old-fashioned mission conference. They, they really are. They're no, they're no longer their own. They seem like, seem like that's the, almost the, the spirit of the age that we only care about ourselves. We see it in our politics. We see it in our world. It's just me, me and mine. And I see it in many of God's people today. And I'm, I, I hate to say it, but it's all they care about themselves. But may I say to you, 
my life, your life is not about us. It's about him. It's about him. I, we're just passing through. What we do for Christ, the only thing that's going to remain, the only thing that's good at all, what we do for him and his glory. Amen. Father, we love you. Thank you for the word of God today. And thank you for these good people, Lord, and this good church, this good pastor. Lord, his family. I thank you, Father, for putting him here, and Lord, for just uh, just, just knowing that there's a church here in Helotus that wants to do the Lord the will of God. Lord, it thrills our heart. Thank you for these good missionaries here, where you'd use them mightily in the, in the fields of their calling. Lord, help us to, Lord, see as you see, Lord, a great big old world that, Lord, needs the gospel. The Lord, they might be saved. We thank you, Lord, now for this day. Thank you, Lord. We'll praise you for it in Christ.